Jack Tagovia and Mike Miner, the odd designs and stuff, and me. I mean, the three of us, because we knew each other very well. I mean, I'd, I'd met Jack doing Winds of War. So Degovia gets Space Hunter. And Mike Miner came on as one of the art directors, and Brent Swift was the other art director. And so Mike worked with us a lot uh, on the miniature side and the design side, and so we were... That was over with Gene Warren and Leslie Huntley over at Fantasy Two, And I worked over, I ran, was their supervisor over there for 12 years. I was over there, and that was the first movie I worked on. There was lots of models. There was a lot of fun stuff, radio-controlled cars, the old 3D. That's not where they shoot it in 2D and then send it over to India and change it over to 3D. That's where you used a beam splitter and shot two cameras at, at a 90-degree into it and did a left eye and a right eye, shot it all that way. Again, you were always looking. I would shoot stuff in Burbank up on the roof in the real sunlight with a real sky. Had to go up there, so you didn't have any buildings or trees or anything. So I've done that a lot, finding over the years. In Burbank, there was a you know, Starlight Bowl up overlooks Burbank. There's a, a parking lot up there that overlooks the valley. But Space Hunter, I had a ton of sets up there where just sky. And then you're in the real light, real sun, build big, and it was huge area. And I did some Bat 21 stuff up there, probably a couple of others. But it was, you know, it was back when you did everything in camera. Everything was fun to do, you know. You could actually build a model, shoot it, build it a big enough scale it looked real, and just put it in the movie. I can't remember the names of any of the ships on that movie, but uh, I know we built landscapes for the alien planet when the crash scene with the... Uh, there was three girls that got out of that ship when it crashed. That was all done practical in camera. Fun stuff. The one Mike Miner designed, I don't remember the name of it, but that was a luxury ship. And when you're looking out the windows of that and you saw the space and the auroras and everything, that was all shot on stage. It was no CG back then, really. That was all practical in camera. You know, what's nice about doing stuff in camera and doing it with pyro and doing it real is you get that the variations that you can't plan for that really look cool. Well, sometimes it works against you. Something happens, something flies into the lens and, and you don't get the entirety of your shot. So that stuff happens. Very seldom does the pyro not go off and give you something that you can use. We did, uh, the finale of the movie was a big power plant. We went up to Bronson Canyon and uh, big fire, big explosion big post-picture fire. I was waiting for five gallons of gasoline to go off, and when it went off, I hit the pelican hooks that released all of this overhead stuff to come crashing down. We had to spray everything with fireproof coating, which was worthless. It did nothing. The whole thing caught on fire. I'm running down the hill, because I was right in the middle of it. I was running down the hill, and everybody else was running to put the fire out. It was scary. Bronson Canyon. That's where the um, only about 2,000 movies have been made there. And they're still made there. To this, I mean, it could be a movie shooting there right this very second. It's got all the tunnels. I mean, it goes back to the early Flash Gordon movies in the 30s when, when you're walking through the tunnels, Ming the Merciless, and the mole people going up against the walls, and they're turning corners. And that's, that's all the Bronson Caves. And it's an area where you can't see the city and you don't know you're in the city. And I found that place when I was like nine years old, 1950, and it was like, whoa, this is great. 